Babylonian medicine as a project began because we understood that very little was generally known about Babylonian medicine within the entire field of the history of medicine. Medicine is a very broad reaching topic because it's, it's the most important of the sciences. So people can live without astronomy, you can even live without higher mathematics but you can't live without medicine. Most of the time, if you're reading a, a general history of medicine in the ancient world, there won't even be a chapter on Mesopotamia, even though it's the second largest corpus in the ancient world. By far the biggest and most important corpus of text that we have is from ancient Mesopotamia. And so Babylonian medicine is, is hugely important for both the history of medicine and the history of, of humankind as a whole. And this connection has not yet been made and still needs to be studied in much more detail. Because most of the work had never been properly translated, explained or made available. Although museums like this museum were full of records, full of documents, full of cuneiform tablets about medicine with medical recipes, with medical diagnoses, with medical treatments. All of this was relatively unknown. Because we not only have the raw materials, but we have an ancient effort to conceptualize that raw material and bring it into a unified corpus. And that is one of the things we've been preoccupied with in this project, is to try to reassemble the corpus as it was structured in antiquity, and not just based on our own modern biological ideas about what kind of illness might be involved. That has been a huge part of the project at every point. And of course, the problem was, what causes disease? This is the primary question in all ancient societies. One popular understanding of disease is that it comes from demons, or from angry gods, or from the supernatural. This means it has a strong religious component. The physicians wanted to actually use plants and minerals and stones that had properties that could actually fight the illness smash them, mix them together in various ways, put them into a carrier like oil or beer or, or milk, then administer that to a patient in various different ways. They clearly viewed what they were doing as assembling drugs that would directly um, heal or help the patient. Medicine developed within the background of a very urban culture. In this urban culture, one, we find an enormous amount of evidence of how medicine was perceived and how medicine developed and how medicine was described. People's fears and people's anxieties and people's need for healing and for medical treatments. I'm not alone in this. My real role was to create a team with important expertise in various areas and to make sure that this team functioned as a team, which it has done for the past five years very effectively. We have to go through a process of extracting the information, trying to translate it, put it into a form which is readable. Once we've agreed upon the structure of the text and the content in terms of transliteration, then we really need to hand it over to one person to really work out the fine details. People recorded drugs and the use of drugs. So it's, at the end, it's quite technical healing. It's phytotherapy. Of course, you have religious components, but uh, they're not central. It's hard philological work, especially when the places are broken and almost all cuneiform tablets are broken. So you need to find uh, parallels or you need to imagine what could be the sign under the damaged part, and at a certain time uh, the signs uh, start to speak. So this, this tablet was compiled by an uh, ancient healer. He was in his training days, and we know this from the colophon of this tablet. It provides the, the most important points for each plant. What is the plant, and against what you use it, and how you use it. You can copy the signs in order to be sure that this is the, the, the proper sign, or you can just uh, transliterate it on the computer. So it's a long process, bringing the documents together where we look at everything as a group. We have a group of researchers in Berlin that we had to send them to various museums around the world, producing digital versions of these texts, and then finally the end result is producing the actual books. Obviously the most important step to make that feasible is to get all the textual sources accessible online. But it's especially good for people who don't know cuneiform at all, historian of, of medicine or historian of science, because they can then step into that corpus and find what they're looking for, and cite elements from the corpus, and cite descriptions of the corpus, and translations, and build that into more general histories. Almost no one's ever done this, right? This is the shocking thing when you read the history of ancient medicine, is how rarely Babylonian medicine comes up. Nothing else would have really been possible if we hadn't had BabMed breaking open that box of locked 
texts and making them available. We are in a much better state of understanding this material than we were five years ago, but there's still a great deal left to do.